Hogan Hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. You know what, Yorkie? Uh, welcome to Coming In Hot, presented by Botano. We may have to get a different audio setting that says just Brent Wallace and Jason York occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> uh, Bobby <laughs> Ryan. Yeah, where is, is he? What airport. airport's he in? Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, San Fran, I don't even know where he's at. I just know he's stuck in an airport and he's mad. So oh, he's uh, we'll human. see him tomorrow, hopefully. Hopefully he's not like Gaylord Fokker when he starts <laughs> Like I don't know who best. you reference all the time. I don't even know people. You don't know who Gaylord Fokker is. Come on. No. All right. Pop culture 101. Have you, you, you're you telling me you've never seen Meet the Parents with Robert DeMille? Oh, me, oh Meet the Fockers. Yeah, it was okay. And Whatever. Ben Stiller? You got, oh, okay. One of the... Yeah, yeah. Anyone listening, Meet the Parents, one of the Every best <laughs> under-the-radar comedy, dark Listen. comedies... I've, I've already gotten friends texting me now calling me neil um after the airplane steve martin reference i don't need okay. any more from you it's they listen that one's bang on wally this is what <laughs> this is what i did my job when i played in the nhl besides playing hockey was i was the nickname maker and i've got you pinned you are you you are neil from planes trains and automobiles that embrace it i i should all, read the text all, he's He's like, absolutely, a, that's you. Like, and yeah. it's almost, it's almost America Thanksgiving. It's perfect. We're, we're gonna have to, you know what? We're gonna get, we're gonna play a little clip from that around Thanksgiving and do the comparison. The, the head to head, <laughs> ta- head to head, tail the tape. Neil, uh, who is Steve Martin, uh, and Brent Wallace. Right now, Neil, uh, sorry, Gavin is out back, just frantically searching for clips. Who are two people that have never been seen in the same room before? <laughs> Neil oh. and Wally. Okay. Uh, we're moving on. But, uh, by the way, new sponsor today, DoorDash, has joined us. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, hold on one sec. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we have a new segment for them, and so we'll get to that shortly. Also, we have a coupon code uh, to help you get a delivery. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Yorkie, before we get into the sends and the vibes, because mm-hmm. uh, it's a fantastic weekend, like I'm not <laughs> sure you could have p- predicted a better weekend for the Ottawa Senators. Except maybe Shane Pinto being in the lab or Josh Norris. But other than that, they nailed it this weekend. Well, we, we, I, we, I predicted it. I think I'll, I'll say we all said they were going to. I said they were going 2 on 0, 2 on 0, 2 on 0, 2 and 0. Uh, and it was a no brainer. It was an absolute no brainer. I just, I'm just surprised. Tampa to me. But hey, give full marks to the Senators. They, I know we'll break the down the, the game yep. down a little bit more later, but yep. they just they manage the puck so much better than what they did in the Carolina game. Um, and and you know, we, we'll, we'll talk about some players yep. later, but but um, yep. man, it was uh, that was they just hit every single mark on the ice, off the ice, all the great things they did, full house for that home opener. Um, man, I think I tweeted out good vibes are back in the city. And man, that that's to say the least. It was electric. Yes, and uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, who I was always positive you were negative. Mm-hmm. Uh, he no, scored, no, I wasn't. So. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm just, I I'm said, just kidding. I said Carolina. He wasn't very good. Exhibition. Yeah. He wasn't very good. But that's what people have to do. Like it's early in the season. Give the guy the little bit of the benefit of the doubt and new surroundings, new teammates. Yeah. And he and then, was he was very good Saturday. He's he's doing he did exactly what he's supposed to do. S- secondary offense, calm with the puck. Uh, he's an underrated passer, um, and he played hard. So that's what you want. Well, yeah, and uh, he did get moved up to the second line, right? We did see him switch around. I think that mm-hmm. I, I didn't like him where he was. I didn't I didn't think that was the right decision to put him on the third line. And then we saw him play better. We know his family's in town. Whenever you yeah. got a little family around you always play better yeah. so um th- i think that played a huge part so yeah I, I, we'll, I listen yeah don't underestimate um ridley greg what he's doing right now he was fantastic it's just it's this is how you create offense you gotta you'll hear dj smith use this expression a lot we were holding on to the pucks a little longer in the offensive zone when you hold on to the puck a little bit longer something opens up you just have to have the confidence to do that. And that's the difference. 
between a Ridley Gregg and, 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 um, you know, I'll look Rourke at this, Chartre. The, well, Rourke Chartre right now is doing exactly what the coaches want. And that's just manage the puck. Don't turn it over, chip it in, but it's hard to create offense when you're playing with a guy like that, but it's, that's his game and he's right. not hurting the team, but it's, it's tough to create offense with a guy like him, but Hey, they're winning. And, and, uh, that's the main thing. Okay. I'm coming back to that in a sec. Uh, at first, listen, this is my, I was going to talk to you about this before and I never got a chance to is this is a huge mental health weekend for all three of us. Uh, Bobby got to go see the Arkells. They played a song for him. We'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, I yeah. said he had to get the Arkells on the show. So we'll see how that turns out. You got to go watch your son play. Then, mm -hmm. then you don the Sens Jersey one more time, throw the bucket <laughs> on I'm back, and baby. you put on uh blue socks. <laughs> I got to Everybody's thinking Toronto Maple Leafs, blah, blah, blah. I was playing in a, in a charity fundraiser for the uh, Winchester Memorial Hospital. It was, out on Win it was out in Winchester Saturday night. And, man, I drove to London Friday, drove all the way back Saturday so, so, I, so I get into the game because uh, uh, I tweeted that out. My head, I don't – that must be a bad <laughs> camera angle because – That's the sense guy looks, who took the headshots a couple years ago, put the fish. My bowl. head looks like Danny Vial's. Like, it's <laughs> enormous. <laughs> Melissa Vial, Danny's wife, actually tweeted at me later and laughed. And I'm like, don't tell Danny I said that. He'll beat me up. But uh, no, uh, the Blue Sox were because so interesting game. It was an interesting cast of characters out there. Chris Neal, Laurie Boschman, Guy Carboneau, oh, wow. uh, Mike Krushelinski, Doug Gilmore, uh, Matthew Dandino, uh, Todd oh. Gill. Todd Gill, who's a local guy, he's from he's from out in, near the Brockville area. Oh. Um, so yeah, all these guys came together to support some money for the for the Winchester Memorial Hospital, and it was awesome. But I had to wear the blue socks because for warm ups they wanted us to wear our NHL jerseys and then skate around, and then game time you put a blue shirt on. So that's that's why I had the blue socks on. But uh, no, it was a great night. Liam came and did a hot stove, and oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Neeler was great. He had some great stories. Carboneau was awesome. For Guy Carboneau, this is funny. He gets up, Liam asks him a question, and Carboneau starts answering it in French in Winchester. <laughs> and he goes, I'm just joking. I don't think there's many French people here in Winchester, but it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, good. And, uh, yeah, that's great. Great night. Like, great night. Chris Neal is a phenomenal storyteller. Well, he had a, he had a great story about Matt Karkner who's from Winchester. And it was when Karks made the Sens, Brian Murray had Neeler tell Karks, hey, you made the team. And uh, and it was it was a really cool story because the way Neeler told it, uh, Brian said, I'm going to bring somebody in that's going to take a little bit, bit of the burden of the fighting off you. Neeler's like, yes, thank you for that. And then I guess Karks had a great camp. He's fighting a lot, um, yep. making his presence felt, made the team. And then Neeler got to tell him. And the caveat to the story was Neeler said, it's the first time he saw a guy six foot five, 235 pounds actually cry. When yes. he got the news that he made the team. Yeah. You remember, you were around that back then. I, I totally awesome remember it, it was a, it was one of those, like the guy finally did it story. Like he worked yeah. his ass off. He made, the team. I, I, we all felt so good. Cause Matt Kartner is just a really good guy. How many years of the Myers was it like seven or eight? It was a long time. It was a time. long time. Yeah, seven or eight. It was a long time. And you yeah. know those guys are considering quitting hockey at that point, right? They're like, what am I still doing? I, I got to go yeah. get a job. And and so I you know the Kirk's. perseverance that plays through that. Yeah. I, I've Oops. Actually, I've reached out to him a couple times to try and get him on the show. I'm hoping he'll, he'll still on. help me out. He'll, he'll um, come on. He, he's a great person. So I went to uh, – you and I spoke on Friday while you're driving to London. I'm driving to Utica. Yeah. New York, and we probably spoke for like an hour. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I went to see uh, my kid play in a in a hockey tournament. Todd White's kid was there. He was playing for the the Junior Pens. Uh, nice. The Junior Sabers are being coached by uh, Kevin Adams, the GM of the Sabers. So he and I had a chat. Um, and then Andrew Peters' kid is on the ice with that team. Okay. Ryan Boyle, I think there was a Boyle on the ice for the uh, Connecticut team, along with Marty St. Louis' kid. I think it's Brian Boyle's. I'm not sure. Wow. Um, there's a Vasiliev. There's there's a lot of anyway a lot of high end talent. Not my kid, but the rest of them are pretty good. Um, and so it was great. But there's one thing, and you've been in, you've played in all those uh, AHL arenas. Oh, this one's brand new. Mm -hmm. So they've got the Utica University is where it's at. And 
their brand new facility is really nice. It probably seats like a thousand people, whatever. Then they have two other rinks next to it. The two rinks don't have a barrier between them. Really? So you hear everything between the two. Ooh, this yeah. is the two rinks. Looks like a mirror. <laughs> so it's so bizarre. So you can hear them warming up on the other side. And it's just talk really about, odd. Uh, talk about maximizing space. <laughs> yeah. We're, gonna, we're basically going to put them right beside yeah. each other. I, so it was weird. Like warm up music's going on oh. on one side. Anyway, uh, apparently the third rink was a lacrosse rink and they converted it to a hockey rink. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But. Just bizarre. I've never seen anything like it. So that was uh, certainly an eye opener. Um, yeah, but good week. It was just. It was good to get away into. Uh, did did, did Wally Junior win his game? No. no, 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 no. He actually got walked by uh, Todd White's kid. So Todd no. uh, Ryan White. They both and they're really good. They're good friends. They've grown up together or whatever, trained together, yeah. and uh, and Ryan White is drafted by the sixty sevens. He's also drafted in the USHL. Really good yeah. hockey player. So he's a defenseman. Ryan goes out to the point, uh, my Ryan, and then uh, he makes one quick move, steps around him, and then snipes at top corner. So yeah, he scored too. It was Whitey? There. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't you think I didn't bring that up? Don't you worry. Oh yeah. boy. But was Todd? Anyway. Was Todd? Was Todd White at the game too? Didn't see him there. No. So I didn't see him all weekend. Um, no. But yeah, they they're a really good hockey team. So with the ju the Junior Sabers might be the best team I've seen play ever. Like they're the, just... this the states the United States is a sleeping giant as far as minor hockey goes. They yeah. just they just they're investing so much money and and uh, they're getting a lot more high end kids than they used to. And a lot, I mean, population itself, right? Well, money, so, population plus money. It's the yeah. it's oh, a rich kids, money. It's a very we talk about it being a rich kids sport here in the in Canada, a very rich kids because they're. You know, especially the kids in Florida and California. I got yeah. friends that are like flying their kids to like games. Yes, it's it's, it's nuts. We, we, there was a kid on uh, Little Caesars that would just get flown in on the weekends from Florida that played in <laughs> Detroit. Like just oh, hopped wow. on the private jet. Yeah. Flew, ah, okay. Anyway, so uh, but good. Like it's interesting to watch minor hockey. And even Kevin Adams was saying. And so if anybody's listening, then you know they're whatever they get. They didn't make their hockey team this year or whatever it is. Uh, at, Kevin was quite. We were chatting about hockey and whatnot and he's like you know what i i'm looking for those kids that have faced a little adversity sometimes like jack quinn he brought up who's a saber he's an ottawa kid well we'll yeah. call him from carp uh sorry cobden he uh he didn't make his triple a teams and it eventually made it to the 67s like there's a lot of guys that uh just needed to, they need more time to grow or to whatever to fill in so he's like yeah you know what that adversity and stuff i'm always looking for so he's like it's Did not always the the best players yeah well, it's it's pretty well how it it's it's kind of always been that way. The the best kid, and usually the best kid changes from Adam to to Ben. Yes, that's the point. It, it it really changes. I remember when I played hockey, there was this guy who played on Belleville. I forget what his name was, but this was like Adam and Pee Wee, and he was like five eight at the time, mustache. Like he'd take slappers from the red line and score and skate in a straight line and go around everybody. But then everybody caught up. Everybody got bigger. Everybody got stronger. And all those little guys that had to like fight and claw, once they grew, it was, be, they became better because they had to face some, some yes. adversity. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and they were, and they stuck, they stuck with it, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's always been that way. But uh, so anyway, you know, he just, those, everybody those just do your own, your own path. Yeah. Just follow your own path. That's all I follow, want. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Wally, but I know we're, get, we're talking a lot of minor hockey here. My dad, Jim, he used to say this all the time to me. He goes, you're playing hockey because it's going to teach you life lessons. It's going to teach you how to work hard. It's going to teach you how to be a good teammate. It's going to teach you um, sportsmanship. He, we never talked about the pros or NHL. We just played. We had fun and we worked hard. And see where the chips fall. Um, all right. Let's uh, move on, by the way. And quickly, also, by the way, on Friday... I uh, was as I was driving the winner of the uh, Jake Sanderson stick because um, Blaze just mentioned it that he was wondering why he didn't win because uh, we picked somebody else. <laughs> uh, I, I stopped by. He lived in Kempville and he was on the way to the U.S. So I stopped by, dropped off the stick to you. So it was uh, nice to meet him. Stop in for a quick sec and say hi. So nice to see uh, and chat with some of our viewers. So anyway, yeah. Uh, on to the game. Game. So they went. So, well, yes. go games. Huh? How do we do this right? So. 
let's hold on. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to get to our uh, ad reads and our new sponsor, and then we'll move into the games. And so because the sponsor, uh, our new segment will lead into those games. You'll, gotcha. you'll know why. OK, uh, we should bring up the Connor Bedard thing tonight. Uh, as always, <laughs> this show proudly presented by Big Botano. Go to botano.ca. Um, all, as I tell you, all kinds of live betting options, including tonight. Uh, Connor Bedard is in Toronto. So uh, there is an enhanced odds there. If you pick, do you think Bedard and Austin Matthews will score in the same game? If you do, it's a plus 430. So uh, that might be worth throwing down a $10 bet. Anyway, we're, uh, please play responsibly. It must be 19. Go to botano.ca and get the app. Uh, with Botano, the game starts now. By our good friends at BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc. Uh, they are helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Equipment rentals, aggregate top toil sales, custom cream, crushing, crushing and screening, all kinds of things. They will help you out in the Ottawa Valley. Uh, go to BonisherExcavating.com, 613-432-1120. And now, Yorkie, for our good friends at DoorDash. Okay, so, and by the way, I know you don't like this, but the holidays are coming, right? They're around the corner. You got to start to get ready. Um, running out of time to run errands, go grocery shopping, and cook a delicious meal for that gathering you agreed to host? You don't ever host me. Uh, it doesn't have to be this hard. Make DoorDash your holiday hack and get your groceries, meals, and more delivered right to your door. Ordering is easy. Just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with our default contactless delivery settings. Okay, so Yorkie, here we go. This is what we got. Hit me. Oh, all right. It's now called the DoorDash hot or cold because you can have anything delivered, hot or cold for that matter, uh, when you go to DoorDash. Now, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. That's 25% off, zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app, and enter code NATION25, all uppercase, N-A-T-I-O-N-25. That's 25% off, $10 value, zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the app in the App Store and enter NATION25. Don't forget, that's NATION25 for your 25% off first order with DoorDash. By the way, only available in Canada, so if you're watching in the Seychelles, uh, you're out of luck, okay? Uh, subject to uh, change, uh, sorry, subject to change terms apply, okay. So thank you for DoorDash coming on board. I really appreciate it. Here's what we do. Each show, you and Bobby, so I will be Bobby today, are going yep. to pick player, team, anything you want. It's either hot or cold. You get to decide. So um, I'm going to go after the weekend, and it's Monday. You can't be negative today. You pick what you want first. Uh, okay. Well, I'm. you know where I'm going. I was laughing. Uh, Alex to brink it. I was. Uh, I already. I. I told you he was going to. The guy's probably going to get fifty playing Detroit. Uh, not make the playoffs. A lot of goals and a six-four uh, loss. Anyhow, let's let's turn the page on that. Yeah, Brady Kachuk. I was just kidding. I am going Brady Kachuk, coming out hot on the weekend. <laughs> Four goals, one assist. Played just over eighteen minutes in each game, and it's not just the goals, Wally. It's the timing of the goals, it's especially you go back to that, uh, to that, uh, that Florida game, or sorry, the Philadelphia game. I don't know mm. second Florida. I got Florida on the mind because Florida's cold. But uh, that goal he scored in Philadelphia with about six seconds left in the period in Ottawa against Philadelphia. That was a huge goal because Philly was kind of hanging around to that point, and that just sucked all the life out of Philadelphia. He had two in that game, two against yep. Tampa. Uh, I think he's on pace for an obscene amount of goals, <laughs> well over 100. <laughs> but, hey, I said he was going to get 45-plus this yeah. year, oh. and I was snickered, ridiculed, <laughs> laughed at. <laughs> Who's laughing now? He's got four I and three, um, and he is uh, he is sizzling hot right now. And he's uh, – Matt, how about him after the game, too? I watched both games on television. I just – it's like this guy says all the right things, hits all the right notes. The guy's got the the fan base of Ottawa like just eating out of his hand right now. He's but the thing is, it, it's genuine. Like you can tell this kid actually cares about the community, is passionate about the city, and 
People love him. And why wouldn't you love him? Why wouldn't you? You remember when Ryan Reynolds was around the team looking to try and buy it? Everybody was like, can the guy be any more perfect? Like Brady Kachuk to me is one of those just perfect individuals. You kind of get yeah. jealous. The guy's good looking. He's got a great <laughs> family. He's making all kinds of money. Yeah. He's scored. He's a beast on the ice. Like, he, yeah. can he do anything wrong? The guy is well, perfect. I'll tell you right now, there's nobody in the league that's as dominant as Brady Kachuk inside that five foot radius in front of the net. Like he, he, he can't move him. He's got quick hands. He's mean. And he's got some skill. Like he's just, he's not one of those guys that just stands there and uses his, cause he's big. He scores. He's actually got some pretty good hands around the net. Yes. And that's why I think he's going to get over 45 this year, because you can really watch what's happened at Stutzla so far. The other teams are really keying on him. So he takes a lot of, he brings guys to them. Same with Claude Giroux. I, I, I Claude needs a shout out as well for being hot. He was, Primary assist, the little steal at the end of the period against Philadelphia mm-hmm. to set up that Kachuk goal. Stole another one in the Tampa game. He's so sneaky. Like, he is great at stealing pucks. And, man, I just – so much respect for how Claude Giroux plays the game, how hard he plays, how he competes. And uh, that's the thing about that line with Stutzla, Kachuk, and Giroux. Each person brings something different to the table. And that's why it works so well. It's okay, so uh, it since almost you're... Rem- just one last thing, Wally. It, it reminds me a lot, and I'm not going to say Claude Giroux's Mario Lemieux because Mario Lemieux is Mario Lemieux. But I remember when Jagger used to play with Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux used to let Jagger carry the puck up the ice, and we'd all back off. And then as soon as they got in the offensive zone, he'd give the puck to Lemieux. And when when Claude gets the puck in the in the offensive zone, man, he's just so smart with it. And I see a lot of similarities to how Jagger and Lemieux played the game. Stutzla reminds me a lot of Jagger with the swagger and the ability to be when Jagger was young, because when Jagger was young, he he was really elusive with the puck. Stutzler really reminds me of a lot of a lot of ways Jagger. Uh, by the way, Yarmir Jagger is still playing hockey. Uh, Is, quickly. Oh. Yeah. Um, Brady Kachuk became the second player in Senator's history to record a multi-goal outing on consecutive days, joining you-know-who. Uh, multiple goals? I don't know. On consecutive days. Only one other player in Ottawa Senator's history has done such a thing. Heatley? Boo, you got it right. <laughs> I just figured a guy that scored a lot of goals. Gotta hate it when you get it right. Um, <laughs> Law of averages. Yeah. Uh, we will get. I want to get back to Lemieux and Yager later in the show. Uh, and for me, I picked uh, for my take uh, hot the Ottawa Senators. Oh. I don't know how you. They I had. You picked, I thought you picked Lyndon Sluage was your guy. Well, partially, the <laughs> new owner, new CEO, Thumbs new up. player of hockey ops, uh, uh, director of hockey ops. Um, they got Alfie back. Lyndon Sluage is singing. Like, what? What more do you need? And they got to win like that. The Ottawa Senators nailed it on the weekend. Absolutely mm-hmm. nailed it. And so for them, I just picked the whole damn team, the whole organization. <laughs> Minus the little Shane Pinto thing. We'll just ignore it for now. Although the chat is all over this trying to get Shane Pinto done. So uh, I, it's very I'm trying to read it and trying to comment, but I'm uh, I don't yeah. have all the, the hands. Well, so, you know what? It's everything's kind of coming up Ottawa right now, because even. Yep. With him out of the lineup, Joseph's just increasing his trade value by the day. Well, uh, I, what do you do? Okay, so Yorkie, what do you do? You've got Matthew Joseph, who looks fantastic, and has now moved up yeah. to the second line after I want the entire Ottawa Senators organization or fan base to apologize to Matthew Joseph and Parker yeah. Kelly because you both wanted them gone before the season started. <laughs> uh, they, they both look great. Yeah. Uh, Parker Kelly yeah. looks like. I'm not taking him out of the lineup. Uh, no. So, the you got the, the obvious choices are Eric Brandstrom, Matthew Joseph, or I guess Dominic Kubalik. Who's yeah. what so do tell you, you do to get Shane Pinto signed? I'll tell you what what I would do. And unfortunately, you got to make tough decisions in this business. But the best part of this is Joseph right now is is now, like I said, he's he's increasing his value. And he's not going to continue to score like he is right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. It'd be nice, 
I'm not saying he's going to dry up and have a season like he did last year, but I, I would still trade Joseph. That's what I would do. Uh, I would, I would trade Joseph and I would, I would package Eric Brandstrom in that, in that trade as a sweetener. And I would try and get maybe add another part to it. I would try and get a good right shot defenseman in return in that trade. Um, wow. A guy that can play a guy that can play right now. And maybe you have to give something else too. Maybe you add something else into the trade and it's nothing against Branstrom. I think he's played really well. I, I, I think he's doing exactly what he, what he can playing in the, in the third pairing, killing penalties. But I just, I don't think that is the role that he should be playing in the NHL. And I think on, if for Ottawa, that's never going to change unless you do something drastic and, and trade one of your guys out of the top four. Uh, but that's what, I, that's what I would do. That's just me. And it's both those players have, have played really well, but I'm of okay. the opinion. I'm of the opinion you try and do something when, and, 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 and maybe it doesn't look great now. Great trading Joseph, but his value is going to be high. Bradstrom's yep. value is pretty high. He's played well. Um, one year deal. And, and I just think when Norris comes back, when Pinto comes back, both those guys kill penalties. Both those guys are penalty killers. You want, because Norris's Norris's role, like it was at the beginning of last year, was killing penalties. And so too is Pinto. So I think that takes off some of the argument of, well, we have Joseph as a penalty killer. And don't forget, not to disregard anything Matthew Joseph's done right now, because he's playing great. Mm-hmm. The season right now is not indicative of what the season's going to be like a month from now, three months from now. Sure. It gets harder. It's, I just, I think that's, I think it's great what's happened. Joseph's playing great, but that's unfortunately because of the cap. That's the, that's what I would do. I know people are saying Kubalik, but I, I still like Kubalik at what he's making $2 million. I, I think he's going to, two and bring, a half. I think he is. I think he's eventually going to bring scoring to your third line when you have everybody slotted where they're supposed to be. And I mentioned yeah. Rourke Chartray. Chartray. He is doing Chartray. He's playing exactly how he should play right now. Yeah. But he's a guy that should be on your fourth line. And he looks really pro- good. He looks is great. he an NHL player for you? I don't know. I haven't seen enough yet. I so if so, here's yet. the thing, Yorkie. If uh, Josh Norris and Shane Pinto come back and are in the lineup on Wednesday, mm-hmm. Who comes out of your lineup? Obviously, Charche is one. Now, yeah, give me the other out. person coming out of your lineup. So you got to take two. You got to take two out. It's a tough decision. Um, and I'm not talking it. about cap space, none of that stuff. I'm just talking about if all these people are here and you have Shane Pinto, and I'm just mostly discussing the middle of the ice. Well, that's where that's where the trade would go. Joseph comes out and Charche comes out. R- okay. But you, so are you just moving Ridley Gregg over to the wing then? No. Um, uh, well, you're oh, going to have Stutzla, Pinto, Norris, and Kastelik down the middle. Yeah, I'm moving Ridley Gregg to the wing. Yeah, I, I would move, uh, I would move Ridley Gregg to the wing. Um, and I think he's played exceptional so far. And maybe he takes some face offs, uh, depending on how the, I, I, I heard the report Norris was taking some face offs and it looked great. I forgot who was talking about that, but. I heard he tested it pretty, uh, pretty forcefully a couple days ago. But yeah, that's what I would do. I, I'd put Greg over to the wing. Um, and again, Chartres played well. Joseph has played well. But it's um, that's what I would do. I would Pinto would go in the center. Norris would go in the center. Greg to the wing, and uh, that that would be Joseph being traded. And okay, your it's an unpo- it's an unpopular it's an unpopular yes. thing right now. But uh, three weeks ago, there was no chance you could trade this guy. Now. Maybe you can. And so uh, Gavin put up a poll question in the chat and asked, would you trade Joseph to sign Pinto? And it's about 67% to keep Matthew Joseph and not trade him. Yeah. Well, people like to think in the here and now. I like to think more in the future and, and how that contract's going to age. Don't forget, once once Norris is back, once Pinto is back, the offensive looks that Joseph is getting right now, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be as, as plentiful. 
he's going to be more, yep. he's going to be more in a bottom six role. And if he's not, then, then why are you signing Pinto? <laughs> Which is when you really think about it, because yep. he's the guy. And it's just, like I said, it's early in the season right now. And, and this is a great, this is a great problem to have Matthew Joseph playing well. It's not even a problem. It's, it's fantastic. Like everybody should be ecstatic because when you play well, you help, you help yourself and you help the team. And so we'll see, but that's just, that's, that's what I would do. Okay. Um, by the way, can we just give Ridley Gregg some appreciation for that pass that wow. he made to Vlad? It was Tarasenko's yeah. goal, if I'm not mistaken, right? The behind the back through the skates in the crease. Uh, I just want to say that is a, I just love the play. And I think yeah. that was the same play. He got crushed in the corner early yeah. on. Yeah. He's, I a, really like his game. I, I just think he's played so well. He really competes Wally. And I said earlier, he holds on the pucks. He's, he's confident. He's, I, I see a much more confident player this year. He's stronger on the puck. He's been able to, yeah, well, I like to call it extend the plays in the offensive zone. And that would be the difference between uh, Rourke and uh, and Ridley Gregg is yeah. one player can extend. And that comes with confidence and it comes with skill set. And it's, it's, it's um, anyways, it's, there's a lot to like what, 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 what Ridley Gregg's doing right now. It's uh, he is, he's taken full advantage of Pinto not being here. And that's, that's sometimes what it takes, right? You, you, a guy's yep. a guy's hurt. A guy's a guy's not at camp. Opportunity, and then it's up to you as the player to take advantage of that opportunity. And Ridley Gregg, he took full advantage of that this weekend. I he was. I'm with you, Wally. I thought he was one of Ottawa's best players. Okay, so uh, I've wanted this to be a full-on positive show. It is positive. But there's a lot of chat in the chat about Thomas Shabbat. Yes. I, I feel, do we just wait till tomorrow? Do we have Can video we just today? have good, good. Oh, I don't Do we know. Have we have any video, video from the goals. So we probably should have sent you a note earlier, but I know what people are talking about. They're talking about the one goal, the three on two. Shabbat looks bad on that. The other goal in Carolina. Um, so, so, so what, everything this, is his fault. No, it's not his fault. This is the this is what's going on right now, is, is at least in my opinion, as far as with, with Thomas Shabbat. I've had to play on my offside before. And it is, I'm gonna tell you right now, it is an adjustment to do. I personally would switch things up. I don't like Shabbat on his offside, and it's not just from what I've seen so far. Um, but he's the guy that offered it up. He's the guy that wanted to try it first. And I get it. I understand he's a veteran guy and he's, he's, there's an issue there. You've got all those left shots. So he's doing that, but I can just remember when I was on my offside and one of the biggest, and you'd think it is a simple thing is to get used to is defending three on twos. Because when you're defending a three on two, when you're used to playing on the right side or the left side, you just, your muscle memory from doing it over and over and over again you just naturally stand on the right side where your dominant eye is looking and your sticks in a, your sticks in the middle of the ice. But then when you switch sides, I used to always drift over too far outside of the dots and I'm watching the game. I'm like, that's exactly what Shabbat's doing right now. It's just, it's an easy fix. It just, it's just more reps getting used to it, but you're, it's, it's not natural. And I could see it on that goal where, he just drifted outside the dots. He turned a three on two into a two on one. And it's just positional. It's, it's, I'll guarantee you, he's watched it on video. They went over, they saw it, and he's like, probably, what the hell? Once you see it, you know how to correct it. Um, okay. I need, other, I just other... want to point out, we forget to, we don't ever point out all the stuff that he does do correct. And furthermore, if you're putting him on the ice for 25 minutes a night, which is basically what it's at right now, I think uh, he played 24 something, 24 46. He's doing stuff right, and that's the I, that's the issue I have is that we jump all well, over Thomas Shabbat. Yet there's a reason why he's playing this much is because he's well, good he, at what he does. Ottawa had the puck primarily, I don't know, 80 percent of that game against Tampa. 
the shots in the first period, I believe, oh my were, seven, were 17 to 3. Yeah, That just doesn't happen because your forwards are getting the puck. It happens from clean exits out of your own zone. And this is the thing. When you're a guy like Shabbat, it yeah. looks like you're not trying because your 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 yes. stride is so effortless. You go back for pucks, you take it, you move up, and you make a great first pass. And then all of a sudden, you just expect that. I always tell people this. If you really want to appreciate what someone's doing, and if you if you're lucky enough to do this, watch a game from ice level, and then you'll then you'll say, "Oh, I get it now." Like like these. It's guys, yes. It, it, I used to start at the end of every game, uh, last five minutes or so. I would go down from the press box to the Zamboni tunnel, and watch just because nuts. of the size and speed. It yeah, is ridiculous. Nuts. Like we're like, so how like, did you miss that pass? <laughs> Like, it's you not just pardon the big, the big this is why there's such a, a premium on a defenseman that can make a pass out of his own zone because when you watch it on tv it doesn't do it justice when you're in the 200 level the 300 or up on the 400s it doesn't do it justice no. when a defenseman goes back for a puck he's got a guy bearing down on him so fast and the defenseman that usually is not a skilled guy will just put it up the boards that's why teams forecheck up the boards but a guy like shabbat a guy like even Brandstrom, most of the Sens D in particular, they're able to go back because they're all good skaters and make a play and use them all the ice and make a pass. And nobody ever talks about that because it looks so easy. And I'm telling you, yeah. it's not. It's not. And I agree with you. If you're playing 25 minutes and your team's winning, you're doing something right. But the thing with Shabbat, he gets heat from the fans because when he makes a mistake, people see it. And like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The three on two, he didn't play well. The other goal, again, he got caught outside of the dots. His guy off the boards beat him to the front of the net, and that's how he got that goal. Um, to me, that's just it's 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 just part of it's getting used to the position, and part of it's hey, mistakes will happen. Those weren't great plays, but I'll say this: his good far outweighed the bad in, in those two games, at least as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so I will have no more Shabbat slander in the show from uh, for the rest of the season. <laughs> well, listen, I, I'm hey, done with. Yeah. I just I tell it how it how it is. Like I don't I don't have an agenda or anything. If I see something, everybody I'll just yeah, say it. but like, but everybody like, makes it, mistakes, and so we just happen to want to isolate. Like I know Tim Stutzla is in Carolina, right? He has the mistake at the blue line, his own end. It ends up in the back of the net. Yeah. There's a turnover. I don't remember anybody going crazy about Tim Stutzer has this turnover and we all, but if Thomas Shabbat makes that turnover, everybody's all over him. And that's the only thing I'm saying. I think Thomas Shabbat's yeah. a phenomenal hockey player. And he is a great player, but I will say this. I think he needs to be a little bit better in his own zone. And it, I, a couple of those mistakes, those need to be. Okay. Then you the put butt. Jacob Chickard on the right side. Then, then, then <laughs> Okay. You know what I would do? Do you know what I would do? Because uh, I I like how Shabbat plays with Zub. I think those guys are great together. Um, I would love to see Sanderson with Chikrin, but I know why the coaching staff's doing it right now. They got Zub and Sanderson as their shutdown pair, yep. and Tampa didn't even get a sniff when those two players were on the ice. So tough to break those two guys up. But I I, I I'd love to see Chikrin on his offside just for – just in the offensive zone, man, he lets – when he's on his offside and you get mm. a guy on, who's a lefty, when they go, when they call low to high from the corner, you can slide it over to Chikrin so quickly, and he's an automatic threat with that shot of his. And it is uh, – you know, it's – it's uh, the way he shoots the puck is crazy, but like I said, it's okay. still early. It's, it's three games in. I think we got to let things play out here and, and, and give some guys a little bit of time here. Uh, okay, uh, and I know they played at home, so things are always a little bit more skewed. I don't know if there's a different, if there's a league that has a more of a, an advantage for home teams than hockey, like the of the big four. But I think, think so. Well, you get last line change, right? Uh, but but you get like, like in the offensive zone face offs, face offs, like right? Icings. It's no, it's not. No, in the offensive zone now, if if uh, if you ice the puck, you, you oh, you pick, get to put your you put your yeah, stick yeah, down yeah. second, yeah. Anyway, like po- that. so I anyway back to what I was trying to get at. I know they're at home. They only gave up 24 shots to Tampa. They gave up four goals over the weekend in a, I guess, 10-4, if you want to say, this outscored the opposition. I know Philly was one of the teams 
That being said, Yorkie, what are your feelings on this team defensively as a unit? Better this year. Um, they seem to be less chaotic. Mm. They seem to be not chasing as much. And I think this is largely due to their, their, their defense is better. Like you don't have Hamannick last year was playing in the top four. Hamannick at this point in his career is not a top to four, four defenseman. He's exactly where he should be right now. Great penalty killer, blocks a lot of shots, plays in your third pairing. So he's now being matched. He, to me, is a perfect third pairing defenseman. He's got some edge. He's big. He plays simple and he kills penalties and he's tough. That's a third pairing defenseman. And you got him with a guy. Uh, people can debate Branstrom, but he's a nice little compliment for him because he moves the puck extremely well. Um, but th there you go right there, slotting. You've now slotted guys where they're supposed to be. Healthy Jacob Chikrin in your top four. Um, Zub, this is another year experience for Zub. I know he's an older guy, but he just seems so comfortable out there right now. You don't notice him, which is a good thing because he's not getting, he's, he doesn't seem to make any mistakes. Like he's just no. very simple, very deliberate. And Jake Sanderson, he's better this year again. Like he, he was a rookie last year and now he's kind of been around the league once and he's even better. Like it's so crazy to me. We have him slotted as a shutdown D man. Crazy. Like a crazy. top and pairing also, shutdown guy. Like, Holy, and Wally, that's how like, far he's ex He's elevated. And yeah. And honestly, show me a good goalie and I'll show you a good team. Yes. And that's what I was going to get at. <laughs> like right? show me a good, you've got two legitimate goaltenders now in, in Corpus Allo and Forsberg, both pushing each other. Forsberg played great. Uh, Corpus Allo was really good in Carolina until later in the game. And that's the yes. difference. Like if he makes those saves, who knows what happens, right? But he made the saves he was supposed to make in Tampa. And when you, and you make the ones you're supposed to get, your team just builds. So goaltending, defense, and that's how they're able to do it without with missing those two centers right now is you, you're, you're deeper. So you can, listen, well, you're going to need those players yeah. eventually, but they're, they're able to, they're able to compensate without those guys right now because of the defense, because of the goaltending. And so don't forget, it, don't forget too. like, don't forget too, all those young players are, are older now. Kachuk's older. Stutzel's older. Mm -hmm. It's experience. It's experience. Um, by the way, I, I think we've got to talk about Tim Stutzler and the penalties in a sec. Um, <laughs> now, the other thing, though, is playing with the lead. Uh, it yeah. used to be a bigger difference. Uh, I'll even say back when you played and, and whatnot, because it was 2-1 games would be of the norm. Mm -hmm. The offense is now, it's, it's changed drastically. But when you have the lead, are you still starting to bear down a little more, right, and protect that? Like, the other team has to open up more. Is that playing in a factor of how the last two games have won as well? 100%. Well, you know the old phrase, Wally, chasing the game. Yes. You, when you start, when you're always down, you're deep pinch, you get two on ones, there's too much space between your defense and your forwards. So you're not chasing it. And, and Ottawa, too, now when they have the lead, they're managing the puck really well. Like they're not, yes. they're not putting themselves in bad positions. And that's when. That's why a guy like Rourke Chartray there, I know I keep butchering his name. That's why the coaching staff likes him so much because he does, he doesn't turn the puck over. He puts it deep. He chips it in. You just, you feel nice when he's out there if you're a coach because you know, he's not going to do something stupid. <laughs> like he's just going right. to do whatever I, you want. I am going to now change Rourke Chartray's name spelling on any board that we do to Chartray. Okay. Um, just for you. <laughs> it's like I got marbles uh, in my mouth. <laughs> uh, so back to Timmy it's taking some heat for some, or uh, I guess we're, we're saying that he doesn't get the calls he deserves. And yet he's also, f some people say he's flopping around. Uh, how would you assess where this, are the officials ignoring Tim Stutzla? Um, is it because he's, he's just a little too, I don't know if flamboyance the word. I don't know what I'm trying to come up with, but he uh, exaggerates, maybe. <laughs> he's saying he's a diver, Wally? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's different. All I'm saying is, and Sidney Crosby used to do this, I felt like, when he was really young. 
And he if did. he got yeah. if he got a penalty, or sorry, if he got bumped, he would just he would embellish it a little. Maybe that's what yeah. I'm trying to come up with. I I would say I don't know. Like I know he's being targeted. He's the number one center. He put up 90 points. He's going yeah. to get targeted. I think yeah. he's just got to keep battling through it. Yeah, and you could tell that was Philadelphia's game plan. Torts had those guys, hey, whenever Sluts is on the ice, skate in front of him, give him an extra hit, give him an extra bump. Let's get under this guy's yes. skin. I would call the word that I would use to describe him is he's emotional. Yes, and, yeah, thank you. And it's it's learning how to bottle that emotion and use it to your advantage. And here's the thing with NHL referees. They don't like guys, especially younger guys, that try and not take advantage, but they show they figure, up a little. Well, they figure they just figure you got to kind of earn the respect of the officials. That's how they look at yes. things. And they never like to be showed up. So I know you can debate some of the plays that happened last year with just so people say, well, he went down a little easy there. And and then his reaction yeah. after, but I like, we'll go back to last year. Claude Giroux was really good at keeping Timmy in, in check and it's a good thing. Like, I would rather have a player that I have to dial back his excitement than to yes. light a fire under them to try and motivate him to play hard. Because you can look at some of the other younger players in the league, and they're like, oh, how do you get this guy going, man? He just needs to play with some more jam. I wish he played with more emotion. Like, So to me, this is a good thing. And he'll learn it. Like, it's when I watch him play, Wally, I just see a kid that loves hockey, wants to win and is super emotional and he wears those emotions on his sleeve. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's always easier to dial back. And I would just, if I was an older guy and I'm sure they said it to him, I would just say, Hey, don't, don't let, cause it's not just the refs. You don't want the other team to see if you're, if they're getting under your skin yes. because then they know they keep doing it and they keep right. doing it. That, 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 that that's would my be the point. O- yeah. That would be the only thing. But like I said, I've got for me and I, when I watch this kid play, I've got I've got zero issues. I just I love how he it, plays and it, it, it's and it's 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 a learning process to get used to what you can and can't do in the league and and he'll get it. He will. He uh and that's the one th- you know if you start to throw your hands in the air like where's the call? Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. you're not getting the call. And so that's well, the only part that I'm talking about. I don't think well, he's a diver. I just want him to cur- to curtail that when you a lot of so one of my biggest things when I was coaching was I had my 10 team rules and I was big on body language and body yes. language and a lot, a lot of coaches are it's have good body language because not only for your guys like I said it's for the other team like I hate it when and I don't see Timmy doing this if somebody on your team screws up and you go I don't think yes. I've seen St- – I've never seen Tim Stutzler do that. No, nope. Nope. Never, nope. never, never. And those are the kind of players you don't want on your team. Correct. That's when you have a problem with bad body language, and I've never seen him do that. I, for a matter of fact, that's, I don't think I've seen anybody in Ottawa do that because that, that's when you have a fractured team. When you got yes. guys that have attitude problems and think there's inferior players on the team. Hey, we all know who the good players and the better players are, but – those are bad teammates that do stuff like that. And I, for me, Tim Stutzla is a young guy that's very emotional and, and he'll learn, he'll learn just like Sidney Crosby did. Uh, if, if we go back and show some video of him, well, you, you said it like he, yeah. the refs were on him early on his career. It's, it's just, it's just a process. And I think like it was Mark Recchi and Lemieux and those guys who tried yeah. to, to get him to just, Hey, it'll come. Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta, exactly. I guess, earn it if you will. You got to um, earn it. You got to earn it. And and by the way, and I, it happens in every game to every team. Every team complains about. It. So I know Sens fans are a little wound up about it, but it it happens everywhere. So uh, I don't think Tim Stutz is the only guy not getting calls. And no, I think the, what, the, he was the, one of the top players last year. I think in drawing penalties, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, him well, or he Brady. Has him. He has the puck all the time. Yes. Um. Okay. I want to ask you. What it's like to face Yarmir Yager and Mario Lemieux, and I don't know who's on the wing coming down, and you're trying to play a three on two. <laughs> it's it's hard because your human nature is to back off, 
And those guys love when you back off because they get time and space. When I played against Yags, it was actually Sean McEachern. and he's like, and you could get away with a lot more back in the mid to late nineties. <laughs> Mac would say, you slash Jagger's hands. He hates it when you slash him in the hands. I'm like, well, shit, who likes getting slashed in the hands? So I kid you not, when Jagger came down on me, I would just be like, just going at his hands the whole time. And then he'd, he'd see him going like that. And the ref would say, okay, Yorkie, that's it. No more. You'd get, you'd, you just knew you'd get two, maybe three slashes. Then they'd call the fourth one. So it was like a little bit of a, Knowing it, what you could get away with, and then in the corner, you can't you can't run at a guy like a Jagger because he's going to undress you. I think you guys showed the video. I'm on Jagger's top. I don't know what it is. Top ten Jagger goals of all time. But <laughs> I go at him in the corner. I go at him. I take a bad angle, and uh, he goes around me, and I I fall. No, I think I turn the puck over first. I go to pass it to my partner. And I heal it, and then Jagger picks it up. I go to get him. He scores. It's a beautiful move by Jagger, but just goes to show you, like, hey, it's it's a game of mistakes. <laughs> I'm, I made plenty when I played, so I, uh, I know how these guys feel. But it's you just playing against those guys is very difficult because they are so smart. They know that they're going to make you back off, and they use that against you. And the best thing to do is to eliminate. It's the old saying, right? Eliminate time and space. Yeah. So, and gap control, we always like to use that term. Yes. Um, Got to have good gap. Uh, stick, is, there, stick like is, is there one guy that was the most terrifying for you to try and defend? Like if you saw, oh, yeah, we're going into Philly tonight or whatever. Really fast, really fast guys. Well, obviously, when Eric Lindros played at that size and skill and speed yeah. and – he was really tough to play against. And when Terrifying. I was playing in when I was playing in Ottawa, I was I was in the shutdown pair for a couple of years. And my assignment one game was to play against the Legion of Doom. So I had Lindros, Leclerc, <laughs> and Michael Renenberg. I think Renberg was the smallest, and I think he was six two, six three. Leclerc was a moose. Uh, and then Lindros running around like crazy. That was a very difficult line to play against. But thankfully back then you could, like I said, you could slash, you could hook. And I could skate pretty good, so I would, I would try and use more body position, squeezing, and things like that. But that was very tough. But I'll tell you, one of the hardest guys though to play against in his prime was Sergey Fedorov. He was mm. so fast, shoot it, could skate by you. And I always talk about guys that could. There's only a few guys that can go wide and cut hard to the net, and they can also stop up and come across the green like that like Fedorov was unpredictable he could do anything with the puck and he was fast and he was strong so he he gave me a lot of problems <laughs> were you, uh, I think you were on the team uh, so whenever I think of your uh Eric Lindros I have like two images one is him getting crushed by Kevin Stevens uh, mm -hmm. sorry Scott Stevens at the blue line the other one is Dackel. him just steamrolling Andy Dackle yeah eyes on the ice oh uh, that was I one was... of the worst moments uh, Lindros was coming in on the four check and I saw him coming and I'm just yelling, Dax, watch out. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> and then just boom. And it's terrible. It's anyone, terrible. anyone watching right now or listening, if you went to games back when the rink was the corral center or the palladium, it was all seamless glass. So when, with the seamless glass, it didn't move. It, it's like, it's like hitting a cement wall. Because the NHL was going through that phase where they were all about the viewers' experience and yes. they didn't really care about the safety of the players. All the boards were like concrete, and then we had like seamless glass, which didn't move, and it was brutal. Like if you got mm -hmm. hit into that glass and your head would hit against it, you'd you'd get these pr pressure cuts where your forehead would explode. But Dackel's head, remember the picture after? Like it was, oh, it, was I it was. I always remember it. His face was mangled. Like his head went on off the glass so hard and he went down just in a puddle. It was brutal. Well, and like, I don't want to, I, I guess be graphic, but because where the seamless glass would always have that one inch gap or two inch gap, you yeah. could see the lines on his face. Cause he was just hit so yeah. hard, but yeah. And that, I think I'm pretty sure Yorkie that play led to eventually the seamless glass coming out. I think you're right. I, th I think you're right. That, 
uh, for sure. Because, it was so violent. Well, our rink in Ottawa and Montreal's, and those were the rinks we'd have to play in the most, where Montreal was so hard to. Like the, it seemed the boards were even harder there. But it's the NHL did the right thing. Now the rinks yep. with the springboard system, like it's it's like a turnbuckle in the wrestling ring. You can actually, oh, this is fun. <laughs> it's like you go into the boards and you can push off and actually use uh, the guy's momentum against him. And now they've gone to the partitions, which are, are great. Um, it's to me the games the, the game has never been safer. It, it really hasn't. It's certainly a lot quicker. Like the speed is yeah. something. It's fun to watch the speed. Because there's yeah, no more it, that holding and um, oh, what did they used to call it coming through the neutral zone when you water you're skiing? holding? Yes, no more water skiing. <laughs> Just yes. like well, the Dallas Stars water skied their way to a Stanley Cup. Oh yeah, the, the, remember the grumpy was it the grumpy old men? That's what they called the uh, the Dallas guys. They had like I'm trying to remember it was Carp was Carbono on that team? Mike Keen, oh, yeah. Brian Scrudlin, Craig Ludwig. Uh, Brett Hall was on that. Yeah, they had uh, a good team. Sergey Zupov, I feel like Sergey Zupov was Darian, on that team. Darian Hatcher. Darian Hatcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Eddie Belfort team, would that have been the goalie? Yes, that team. Ken Hitchcock was the coach. That team was built for that era. They knew exactly yeah. how to play, how to win. It was a very good team. He was very good. All right. Uh, speaking of very good teams, the Ottawa Senators have started this season looking like a very good hockey team. We're excited about it. So with that, we get to do another show tomorrow morning um, with Bobby. Uh, hopefully <laughs> with Bobby. Don't forget, join us for a hot and cold. Or actually, sorry, hot or cold from uh, DoorDash. We'll uh, pick our newest. Um, I, I don't. I, I think, by the way, Yorkie, you are on a, a season ban of picking Alex DeBrinket. What are you talking about? Oh, you can't for, pick him. Uh... Yeah, if he if he goes ten games without a goal, you can't pick him for your Colts. I won't. I let you. I, I, I don't expect that. I already told you he's <laughs> he's he's probably going to score fifty goals this year. Uh, hey, he's going to get fifty, but the, he's going to get a lot of those goals in six four losses. That's what's going to happen. Uh, one thing I meant to bring up before we go: things could always be worse. We could always be the Edmonton Oilers right now. And if you don't think there's panic <laughs> in Edmonton, you're sad. Par- Come on, they're not panicking right now. Florida Panthers or Florida Panthers might be a little panicked, but Edmonton's no, not panicking. Edmonton's panicking. I'm telling you right now. We'll get to that tomorrow. Um, right. But for now, everybody, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, we will see you hopefully 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and then uh, back on Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, you're watching Coming In Hot presented by Botano. See you, everybody. Coming In Hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.